This is a message for Lauren Armstrong. If you ever hear this, I hope it helps. When you were born, you were young, life was grand, your eyes were sparkly, all of the hope, your vision, the love you were feeling, forgiveness for your mistakes because you were a child and you were still learning. But somewhere along the way, you went to anger, just like I did, because it's easier. Sadness, that's your only other outlet. You have to have that emotional dump, screaming and crying, and that's still the way you are. Yes, the internet laughs at you, because you're a law cow, a, a source of unintentional humor and entertainment. It is the result of someone who is thinking they are much more knowledgeable and much smarter than they actually are. Someone who is in denial about the things that got them to where they are today. A billion things have to happen to get you from point A to point B. You've been alive over a half a century. Where you're at right now is of your own making. There are mitigating factors, circumstances out of our control that do push us in certain directions. It's on us to course correct. God knows I've made my fair share of mistakes. I'm divorced. I have two beautiful children, one who I rarely see and one who I see half of the year. And it sucks, but I did that. It takes two to tango, but I was the one who most likely did more damage to that relationship. But this isn't about me, Lauren. This is about you. It's about someone who refuses to take responsibility, real responsibility for what they've done. It's not too late. You like to tell people you believe in them. Lauren, there are plenty of people that want to believe in you. If you started making a positive change and people saw real change in you, you have no idea the support you would receive from this community. But it couldn't be words. It would have to be actions. Those are hard, Lauren. Very hard. The restrictions on you, they're going to stay and they deserve to stay whether you think they do or not and that's the point of those restrictions because you don't understand that they need to be in place that's why they need to be in place you can blame those restrictions for all of your pitfalls and and all of your stumbles Lauren but that's not why you learn to work around things at work there are rules you have to work within those rules As Stone Cold Steve Austin would say, you got to work within the little system. Those restrictions are in place for a reason. You also have to let women know about those. How many times have you said you could get any woman on the planet, but yet you choose to stay on the phone with catfish women? I'm letting that sink in. Your behavior is terrifying, Lauren. You can't control yourself. Those voicemails you left for Debbie, who was in the hospital, unable to speak, with a concussion, you didn't understand that brain damage can come from the fish hitting her with such force. The only thing you were concerned about that day was somebody brought her a coffee and she didn't talk to you on the phone. No woman in real life is going to deal with any of that. Go back and listen to your Ramona calls. You can say you've changed, but I'd tell you to go back and listen to the Jeffrey calls and the Rod calls. You haven't changed because you don't know how to deal with anything other than with anger and sadness. And the bigger problem is you don't know when to separate yourself from situations that are not healthy for you. You're gullible. You fall for scams easy. Look at all these catfish situations you were in over the years. It's sad, Lauren, and there are people who want to help you. I could diagnose you with many things, but there are doctors, people much smarter than I am, that can tell you the same thing and explain it better. You need medication, bipolar medication. It will make your life so much better It will be tolerable. You can control those impulses 
your compulsive behavior, all of that can get under control. You have to admit that you have a problem and you have to take something like Lamictal. Lorne, I assure you, if you talk to your doctor or a therapist, they will put you on something that can help you out. Do not be stubborn on this. If you want your quality of life to improve, if you want your behavior to change, or at least have some assistance in changing it, you need to be on medication. I urge you to find a church group. They are the most accepting. And who knows, Lauren? Who knows if you get on medication, if you start working on your behavior, if you become a prominent member of that community, just like Michael Patterson, some of the other predators from this show, they all turn their life around. Lord, I'm not saying be religious, but I'm telling you that's a place where you can meet friends, people you want to be around, people that can be good examples for you, remind you that life can be good. It doesn't have to be miserable. Make your new past something you can look back on. What could you tell a woman? What could you tell her, Lauren? If you went on a first date and she asked, I want to ask you about the women you've dated before. The last, what, 15 years have all been catfish women, maybe longer than that. You haven't had a real girlfriend. We discovered that Nikki and Paula, they weren't in a relationship with you. But you attach yourself and convince yourself that you're somehow connected with them. Lord, if you want a real connection, you have to go meet real people. You fall asleep with your Bluetooth headset on in the desperate hope that someone's going to call you. Praying that someone's going to call you. Your most common phrase is call me back. I was there. I was in that spot you were in. We took the same path. I was a 4.0 GPA in middle school. By the time I was in high school, my grades fell, the more popular I became. And soon I barely passed my senior year because I spent all of my time worrying about other things, socializing. But I joined the military. I got my life in order. I got a job, I got married, I had kids. I have a good job. I enjoy my life. It's not perfect, but I am where I am. Lauren, where you're at right now is isolated in Cornville, in a dilapidated trailer with no prospects, no friends, no women, and soon you're going to be all alone. That's not good for people like you and I, Lauren. It's not. Somehow, you have accepted that where you're at is where you're always going to be. I don't know if it's because you're lazy, if it's because you think you can't do any better, or that you feel like you don't have to do any better. I can't imagine anyone in your situation looking around and saying, hey, this is where I wanted to be when I was growing up. That little kid with dreams, sparkles in your eyes, hope, as I said, never thought he would end up where you're at. You did something horrible, and by all accounts, in your own admission, you had relationships with younger girls before her. You're controlling you're abusive, you're manipulative, you don't have any trust, you're definitely insecure. All of those are traits that you have to work on before anyone else can be in your life safely. We all want to see you change. We want to see you succeed. Do I think you deserve it? No. But that's me. As a human being, I want you to be the best you can be. I want you to be of some value to society. In your head, society is mom and whoever else you've got in this teeny little circle. You step out one foot into the big city and you're lost forever. No one would even look twice. My advice to you, Lauren, and I know you're not going to take it, move. You can say, I can't move. You can say, it's too expensive. Find a way. If you really want to do it, you can find a way. Be humble. Take jobs you normally wouldn't do. 
jobs where you have to actually work, but you don't get paid a lot of money. Save up. Move into an apartment somewhere in the big city. Branch out. Find communities you can embed yourself in. That's the only way you're going to better yourself because by yourself, you're going to sit around all day with your headset on and life is going to be nothing but voicemail messages, call me back please, singing songs, never experiencing what real love is, real happiness, real joy. Your passion, I don't have a clue what it is. I thought it was singing, but I don't think that's it either. I think your passion is just finding anyone, anyone you can attach yourself to and just start love bombing them. That's not healthy and it's not helpful. You need somebody there in person, but you need to work on yourself first. If you change, get on medication, stay away from drinking, stop worrying about the restrictions, push them to the side, follow them, but live your life. You will be much happier. You cannot do this alone, Lauren. There are resources you can reach out, you can use. Again, at church, there are resources. Remember, not every female who is trying to help you, that cares or is compassionate to you as a human being, wants anything more. You're so desperate. You want that connection so bad. But if your side of the connection is broken, if no matter what happens, you can't plug anything into it and get any kind of spark, you're not going to get the connection. So you have to fix it. You have to make it so that if there is a connection, it can plug in safely. You don't want to kill the other side. Every time you act out, you kill the other side and that connection's gone. You need help, Lauren, and there are people who would be willing to do it. You just have to listen. People who have made something of themselves, who don't blame their hardships. People have gone through much worse than you have and have ended up much more successful. So it's not an excuse. It should be a driving force behind your motivation your desire and if it's not you're going to remain in that trailer in Cornville for the rest of your life no matter what people think about you personally as a human being you have the potential to be greater so make it happen get some help listen learn get medicated and make your new past something good so that when you die they'll look back and they'll talk about those last 10 to 15 years 20 years however long it is and say what a great man Lauren Armstrong was because right now they're only going to be talking about the rage monster the guy who got caught on NBC who lives in a trailer with no job and no prospects and he died alone If that's harsh to you, let it be a reality check. Lauren, there are people out there who will care about you. Seek them out and make a change. Whether you listen to this or not, that's up to you. But I hope you do change, and I hope your life changes for the better.